Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take about a 30 minute flight. Uh, a little more testing on the Vietnam scenario that I'm creating for a uh, single player. See our uh, Cobra attack helicopters making their way out as the troops get loaded up here in front of us. Uh, like I said, this is uh, kind of a long video, uh, you know, so please stick with it. There are some sped up parts uh, as far as the ferry flights. Uh, and the uh, return flight to the FARB uh, and then back out to the objective. Uh, we see our troops getting loaded up and we can go ahead and turn on our northerly heading, heading here uh, to get to uh, uh, start proceeding to the waypoint. So as we go we're just going to follow the runway directly out here north about 30 degrees. Um, still haven't built the uh, 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 mission briefing as of yet. Still need to learn how to do that as well as some uh, kneeboard uh, information to help you uh, get adjusted to you know the direction you need to go where the LZ is and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, still learning this process so anyway uh, about to hit the sped up section here where we're going to ferry across the channel. Uh, Gonna have to, as you notice here, keep an eye on the engine. Uh, temperatures in Vietnam, from what I understood, were about 80 degrees during the summertime, which is uh, clear and bright on this day, a little wind, um, uh, but also, like I said, about 80 degrees. Uh, so you're gonna w keep an eye on that temperature gauge depending on your loadout. Um, you know, I selected about 40% fuel uh, for this trip. Uh, you keep the weight down, whatnot. Now you also notice too probably that we haven't uh, necessarily formed up with our flight um, again after a little bit more uh, educating myself on the uh, specifics of, of the mission editor. Um, you know I'll be able to you know kind of correlate your flight with with the rest of the flights or my flight you know as it stands right now. Um, just like I said, first mission, trying to get things, you know, operational, uh, you know, from the perspective of the AI, you know, doing what, we're, what it's supposed to be doing, you know, while we're having uh, our flight doing what it's doing. So, approach the hill here, again, watching the temperature. Uh, I've noticed the AI tends to stack up at about this point. Uh, I'm not really sure if that's due to the altitudes or the speeds that I've got the helicopters set at. Um, this is basically based off of timing, um, and, and there's probably some better ways to do this. I've had some trouble setting specific times, uh, you know, in the mission editor, um, and it, it kind of jacked things up on me a little bit when I was creating this. So I just st stuck to, uh, you know, basically giving everybody, uh, you know, just their waypoints and speeds um, you know it, it, this not it's not a hard um, uh, mission like I said it's 30 degrees north and then 21 degrees essentially back from the uh, objective area or the LZ to the far it's not hard to find uh, there's two open areas uh, you know where we'll have uh, number one the far which is located behind the open area where the mortars are located um, again, the, the ferry flight's uh, roughly 12 to 13 minutes before you'll turn in on the LZ. Um, and like I said, the, the flights, uh, the chalks tend to, tend to stack up so you can easily catch them. Uh, you know, if, if you're reasonably good in the Huey like I am, I'm, you know, not, not a pro by any far stretch of the imagination or anything. Uh, but I got a reasonable handle on the, on the vehicle at this point. So we're just gonna, you know, keep flying in, uh, you know, kind of looking around, making sure we're on track with, uh, you know, guys. Uh, the F-10 map is available. I don't want to limit anybody from, you know, being able to successfully navigate either. You know, if, if you uh, trim your helicopter out, make sure you're not going to run into the ground like I used to do. Um, when I first started flying this and trying to, you know, check the map, see which direction I'm going in and all that kind of stuff. 
So, uh, you know, feel free to check it and just make sure you're, you know, on the right track. Again, the, the degrees and, and headings and all that kind of stuff, uh, once I get into creating the mission briefing <coughs> and other parts of this a little bit later uh, down the road, uh, you know, you'll have all that stuff to, to work from. And again, the neat board uh, information as well. So we're kind of catching up to our flight there, like I said, are, you know, the, the hills to get over, uh, you know, which is kind of realistic. I'm, I'm glad that worked out in the area that I chose to create this mission in. Uh, it does give you a little bit of, uh, like I said, engine management, weight management, uh, you know, so it's uh, got a little bit of difficulty to it, uh, but not a huge amount. Now, you know, when I was first testing this and I was trying to burn my way over here for testing instead of using the... <laughs> using the speed, uh, I burn up a few engines, you know, trying to get across these hills. Well, like, you know, that's an added challenge, you know, for folks. Uh, you know, something you also actually wanted to, you know, keep in mind when you were flying that bird. So off to the left here, you can see that our waypoints and the, and the chalks waypoints will take you right by the uh, FARP and the artillery. Uh, so again, it's not necessarily all that difficult to find. And we're probably about two or three minutes out now from the uh, waypoint where we'll turn in on the ingress point to the landing zone. Uh, there will be another clearing uh, coming up here just off to our left where I've placed the mortars. Um, I hadn't, <laughs> hadn't really realized that I could make them transportable as well. Um, I did add some extra infantry in the uh, VIL. Uh, you know, which was supposed to be the objective of the infantry after they, you know, get let off of the LZ. Um, and some other uh, Blue Four infantry approaching the uh, the village as well to kind of help with the overall takeover of the, the village. Um, I did not create some extra uh, chalk flights or landings or any of that kind of stuff. I did notice, and, and I don't have a monster rig here, but I do like to do things in 4K as best as I can. Uh, just, I don't like to go backwards. Uh, 1080p was nice, uh, you know, and prior to that, some of the other resolutions, lower resolutions, but when you can go up and make things pretty, that's where I want to stay if I can. Uh, so again, I don't have a monster rig here, and I did notice DCS, of course, you know, a lot of us experience this, the, the chop. So, you know, when, as I started adding units uh, of helicopters and ground targets and, and the fire exchanges and things like that, got a little bit of, uh, of the lag spikes going on now. Uh, you know, again, th this is for everybody to play. I also don't want to overwhelm, you know, other people's PCs, um, you know, because I don't know what kind of rigs they're going to be playing on. And... You know, as well, since this is my first mission, I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible. Uh, you know, additions, you know, and, and and things later on as, you know, people give me feedback on, you know, hey, I'd like more in the area or less in the area or, you know, whatever, whatever the feedback, uh, you know, is from the community if they decide to play these missions. So here we are. We're going to go ahead and come in. I did turn the labels off, so you're, you're not going to see, you know, the same things that you saw in the previous videos where you're going to see, you know, where all the units are located and uh, that type of thing. Um, you know, so this is kind of an actual testing playthrough, so to speak. Uh, we're going to come in. Uh, obviously, I already know that, you know, the troops are over here on the right-hand side because uh, I've tested this, you know, a few, <laughs> few hundred times. Uh, but anyway, we're not going to fire on them right away. We're going to, you know, fly in as though we've we've never flown this mission previously. Uh, you know, we're going to overfly the LZ Lima here. Uh, we are going to see a few rounds kick off here momentarily. Uh, you know, as we're we're looking around and our door gunners are start uh, going to start to become active. Um, Yes, that's what you want to pay attention to. I mean, if you if you if you're not using the labels and things of that nature, obviously I've got the troops in the trees, uh, you know, to make it more realistic. You know, the the, the enemy would want to stay in cover, uh, you know, and and fire from a uh, you know fire from cover. Um, artillery is going to be kicking off here uh, as well soon. You'll hear a couple 
couple of pops of the artillery as it uh, starts to come in. And the anti-aircraft guns down there in the village uh, at the end of the landing zone are going to kick off here and, and start sending rounds uh, in our direction. So therefore we turn back. Now the infantry is actually starting to open up. Uh, I do have these triggered on waypoints. Uh, they are to hold fire until they reach waypoint two, which is the uh, essentially the tree line. Uh, so, you know, it's it's kind of a surprise attack. Again, you know, from, from what I've been reading and, uh, you know, learning through some of the videos that I've been watching, uh, you know, that's that was how they did it. They would wait, you know, until the chocks and the helicopters were vulnerable on the ground and then they'd start opening up on them. So I want to kind of give that, that sense of realism. Um, and here we can see our, our uh, door gunner opening up. And we're going to, you know, kind of follow the rounds of his tracers in here. And then we're going to start laying in the uh, supporting fire from, from the rockets. And we'll just keep making, uh, you know, circular passes over the uh, tree line here. Uh, as we know, this is where the enemy is because our, our gunners have, have opened fire. Uh, also, we're using uh, the uh, uh, smoke rockets. Uh, I guess they're the Willie Pete. I'm not really sure what they're listed as. I, it's been a while since I actually loaded this uh, helicopter. Uh, but it does give off the smoke uh, also to, you know, mark targets the uh, same way that, that they would have, you know, during the during the real deal from, again, what uh, historical information I've, I've looked up and, and watched. Uh, there was a tragic... Uh, <laughs> A, a tragic end to this mission and as you can see as we're passing our lead chalk and <laughs> you're gonna have to watch the uh, uh, you know the other flights in the, in the group but as you can see right off down here to our right our lead helicopter uh, it, even though I played this mission through I don't know how many times uh, this is the first time the lead ship has got taken out now this will come into uh, come into play here at the end of the video when I actually get shot down uh, as that infantry unit that was in that first chalk is the one responsible for going into the village and taking out the anti-aircraft guns. Um, that being said, you also have your flight of F-4s, which this time deemed it necessary to uh, do more attacking in the woods than they were uh, attacking in the... Ville, which is the assigned uh, spot. I didn't use pinpoint, uh, you know, because I don't, I don't, again, I, I want to make this as organic, uh, you know, as possible when, when people are playing through it to, uh, you know, just have it kind of open-ended. It'll, again, it'll be different each time. The infantry's uh, both are on random, except for a few chosen units to try and, you uh, give the U.S. side a little bit more balance. Again, we're, we're going for an overall objective of the, the village down here to the northwest. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I do want them to kind of make the objective, uh, you know, as best they can. Now, again, the, you know, the, the lead, lead bird getting shot down really did kind of throw a monkey wrench into uh, this, uh, this particular playthrough um, that I wasn't expecting. Uh, and you know that's the other thing about it being you know as organic as I can I can try and get it is that you know something different's going to happen each time you play it through and and that's really what I'm I'm going for uh, and again you know on on previous video I said you know yeah you're going to hear small arms fire and and there's you know very little risk of getting shot down I was wrong <laughs> but then again you know I didn't I didn't spend a whole lot of time uh, trying to attack the village as well as part of uh, you know, the cast mission here, so. But the gunners open up, and again, you know, we're, uh, you know, doing what we're expected to do here as far as, excuse me, providing support for the troops on the ground. Um, you know, paying close attention to where our um, gunners are firing, and just trying to circle the... Uh, you know, the LZ and provide the supporting fire. Here on our left-hand side as we pass, you can see the uh, AI helicopter that just decided not to participate once he got to the LZ, uh, thus rendering another chalk of, of infantry uh, essentially useless. 
Um, again, you know, DCS, don't know what's going on there. That's the first time I've seen this uh, in the actual mission. And like I said, I've, I've tested this quite a few times uh, in the past and, and have not had any problems with it. Now, that's also to say that I was testing the mission as I was building it. Now, this one is actually run from the mission file. Um, you know, so maybe the results are going to be just a little bit different than they were from testing, you know, inside the mission editor itself. So again, uh, you know, we're just going to fly up and down the LZ. We're going to try and avoid the hot spot, which we know is the uh, village dead ahead of us. Because um, again, those quad 50s are going to open up. Uh, you do, again, need the World War II assets pack uh, for this. Um, you know, like I said, I didn't want to overwhelm anybody with this uh, mission or myself. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, just flying in and just immediately getting torn up to where you're essentially, you know, no use to anyone. Uh, so I did use the World War uh, II asset pack. Now, I'm not really sure whether the, uh, you know, the, the forces in Southeast Asia had quad 50s or, or an equivalent, uh, but I do know they did have some type of, you know, anti-air uh, machine guns and, and things of that nature. So I'm not going to have to worry about SAMs or, or any of that kind of thing in this mission or any uh, inbound aircraft. Uh, you know, with uh, missiles or, or any kind of any any kind of stuff like that. Like I said, I'm trying to keep this just reasonably simple and close to authentic as I can. Uh, you you will notice that this big pocket right here, uh, just off to our right hand side, which we're not really looking at, um, you know, is is pretty low on infantry, uh, which means the artillery strikes, which are actually. Uh, designated pretty much over the entire, it's a big area, over the entire uh, forest right here to our right where the, where the enemy's coming in from. Um, it, the artillery does tend to strike the, the infantry quite a bit. Um, like I said, I've gotten mixed results. Uh, you know, at times it, it's uh, overwhelmingly good and there are times when it is not good at all. Um, but it, like I said, it, it does kind of function, you know, uh, you know, like real artillery, and, uh, you know, does tend to take out some of the units that I've placed over there. And as far as the ground battle, um, you know, I'm not really sure, again, we're, we're flying the vehicle, so unlike my last video where I kind of <clears throat> had the overview of the uh, infantry fight on the ground, we're not really getting to see a whole lot of that. Um, you know, again, I've got one chalk um, in, a, in a helicopter that's just sitting there being uh, ignorant. Uh, and in the lead flight, uh, obviously. So we've got more more infantry up here towards the anti-aircraft guns, which you know we're trying to take out here right now with the the door gunners. Uh, so I really didn't get to see the, you know, like I said, the big infantry firefights like I've, I've seen in a couple of different playthroughs. So, you know, if you guys uh, are interested, uh, I am going to drop a link to these, uh, you know, or, or to the mission file in my uh, OneDrive and Google, Google Drive. Uh, so you can play it and, and kind of give me some feedback and I can, you know, try and make some adjustments and whatnot. Uh, you know, help is appreciated, uh, you know, for any of you guys who have who've built missions before and, you know, can give me a few pointers on, you know, how to make this a little bit better or, uh, you know, whatnot without, uh, like I said, overdoing it too much because, again, you know, I want to try and keep it moderately simple, uh, you know, for performance and, and, and things of that nature as well, so... Our wingman down there off to the left, and he's doing business as well. And I don't know if the kill count over here on the right is specifically, uh, you know, what you're getting as you uh, uh, and your crew, or whether your wingman's uh, counting uh, counting up the score as well with you. I did, and yes, I did uh, actually include one more, uh, you know, to make it authentic, uh, or as close to authentic, because they did say they would have at least a couple uh, you know, Huey gunships, uh, you know, providing support in the area for the, for the landings. 
Uh, and yes, I know the, the, the Cobras, again, are, you know, a little bit later uh, time frame. But again, you know, I want to provide some visual, visuals, uh, you know, as well as some extra supporting stuff. Uh, only hear the F4s uh, occasionally uh, in this particular playthrough. So again, it's a little different each time. Um, <clears throat> and it did look like um, the attack helicopters, instead of staying in the wood line this time, also uh, proceeded over to the village. Now there's three of those quad 50s. Uh, in the village, stationed around uh, in various spots. It looks like they downed most of the, of the Cobras uh, in this uh, scenario. Uh, I have had one, maybe two, on previous playthroughs, but again, that was playing directly from the mission editor, so I don't know if uh, that has any effect or not. But uh, it seems like all of them pretty much got nailed this, uh, this playthrough. So I thought that was a, a little bit different. But again, you know, it's dynamic. It, it can be different each time you play it, so... And at least our AI gunner was smart enough to stop firing as our, our wingman <laughs> was flying through the bullet path there. And this is one thing I, I you know... Truly, uh, truly love about the Huey, uh, you know, from seeing footage, uh, you know, about that period in history and how, you know, they would fly and orbit, and, you, and you're able to look out and, and, you know, even though it's across the ship, look out at your gunner, see where he's firing so that you can keep a good orbit, uh, you know, and give him the, the best possible um, uh, firing solution. You know, to, to keep rounds and suppression and, and whatnot, um, you know, on the target as you're as you're going around. Now, obviously, you don't want to just fly in a big loop because that makes you a target. So, you know, figure eights and, and rolling from one door gunner to the to the next door gunner is you know probably your your best uh, best solution. And at this point, we're going to go ahead uh, again, jump back into the fast forward. I do check the F10 map here just to make sure I'm on target, and I wasn't really paying attention to my directional flight, so I did check the map uh, and found out that I was a little bit off. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure that the FARP is working correctly. My my first attempts at making sure that the FARP was uh, working uh, weren't. Uh, I had to look it up. Uh, and you actually have to put certain units in your FARP, um, the, the Humvee for communications, uh, tanker uh, for the fuel, because the little static uh, fuel blocks and, and static ammo doesn't seem to do the trick. Uh, but I do believe they have to be there. I'm not really quite sure. I, I looked up something that said the fuel truck and the uh, communications truck, as far as the Humvee goes, and as well as the supply truck, have to be within 150 meters of your uh, fart position in order for you to be able to use it uh, successfully. So uh, we are going to go ahead and go go in for a landing here um, and uh, refuel, rearm, and it does it does actually work. Uh, I was very happy to find that information online and be able to get this thing to actually uh, do what we wanted it to do. Uh, you can see the vehicles out here in front of us as we're uh, bringing this thing down into land. Now, I should have, uh, but in order to keep the video length and, and whatnot down, I should have repaired. Because uh, we've already taken some damage, so I'm sure that's probably uh, why we meet our, our demise at the end of this video. Um, and, you know, as well as, like I said, the first chalk being taken out and, the, and that infantry not being on the field where we... Uh, where we need them to be uh, to remove that gun uh, from the village. 
there's like I said the other sets of infantry that are supposed to take out those guns at some point later uh, I, I will probably go back and, and recheck uh, the distances on the other blue four infantry uh, approaching the village make sure that they're they're getting there uh, a little bit closer to time um, so that uh, you know those those anti-aircraft guns will not be there for uh, you know a better length of the mission. Uh, I do want them kind of removed, uh, you know, if I can. Uh, again, you know, I, I'm not trying to to get people killed right away in this mission. Uh, and if you choose to go back and, and rearm, I want you to be able to go back over and you know lay down some more rounds on target and whatnot. Or you know, if you're good enough in the Huey, I'm I'm, I'm not quite. <laughs> Not quite that adept. I can fly it, uh, you know. I can I can hit stuff sometimes, but I'm not the greatest, and, and my eyes are not the greatest anymore. I've got bifocals and whatnot. I'm a little older. I don't care for using zoom because zoom is, you know, well, when you, the only way you get zoom in your eyes is with glasses. Um, so I, I like to keep my perspective, you know, uh, kind of as we see it. I do use it a few times here, here toward the end, just to make sure I'm seeing what I'm seeing in, in testing. Uh, and I do zoom in to make sure that I'm looking at the, uh, the quad 50 as it shoots us down to make sure that it, uh, number one, I was trying to make sure that it had been taken out by the infantry. It hadn't. Uh, and as soon as I zoom in to look at it, it starts firing and pretty much pilot kill and, and that's the end of the mission so let's zip back over here uh, a little quicker back to the uh, objective area and uh, skirt around it looks like all the infantry or most of the infantry uh, has been dealt with um, I didn't check to see if the um, and I probably should have uh, since I was testing this, but I got to carry away with flying around. Uh, if the Blue Four Infantry was making its way uh, toward the village. Now, obviously, we've just uh, gone back and refueled and rearmed, given them time to, uh, you know, transition from their from their waypoints, uh, you know, off the field, uh, into the into the trees, uh, just off to our right here on the landing zone and uh, you know start making their way toward the village uh, which is again the objective of the the mission for the most part again there are no solid conditions uh, in this you know as far as you know having to kill x troop or uh, you know there's a, a mission end or you know anything uh, like that i haven't really put any of that in here um, Again, because I, I just want you to be able to uh, fly, you know, for as long as you want. And once there's, uh, you know, nothing to shoot at, you can pretty much call it done. So. We'll make a couple of passes, I think, around here. And, and nothing's really opening up, so it looks like, you know, most of our AI targets are are down at this point and then we'll probably head over here toward the vill uh, where the the 50 will open up on us the quad 50 and eventually give us the one way to to end the mission <laughs> effectively anyway so And there it comes, so we're going to pull some evasive here. And I'm going to try and look around, uh, you know, the village and whatnot to try and see if my infantry has made it. And again, I, I probably should have checked the map just to make sure that, you know, everybody's in the right place. When I was testing it, it, it actually worked out okay. Um, but here... Um, you know, in this particular mission, um, you know, things things changed a great deal. Um, and I don't know whether my infantry had actually, you know, made it to their to their final waypoints or not. Um, so, again, I'll, I'll probably have to go back in and, and double check and, and test some more and maybe change a few things. But, again, I just I wanted to get this out, out for folks, uh, you know, since I've, I've posted it. Uh, there have been a few people interested and, and really wanted to play it. Uh, and, and I'd appreciate, again, any, you know, any feedback from, from people that, uh, you know, 
run through the mission and say, hey, man, this this is ass or, you know, whatever. Uh, please be nice again. This is my, the first mission I've ever created in DCS, and we all know that it's kind of a pain in the butt to get, you know, everything right and some of the triggers and, and the logic can sometimes, you know, uh, get to people's heads. So, anyway, if you uh, end up enjoying the uh, video and the mission, uh, you know, go ahead and like and subscribe and all that kind of silly YouTube stuff. Um, and here we are. We're about to lose it. So, anyway, y'all take care out there, and uh, keep your nose up, wings level.